Tonight, breaking news, Vladimir Putin warns the worst is yet to come amid a noticeable escalation in the Russia-Ukraine war over recent days. Fears that the capture of the largest nuclear power plant in Europe could spell disaster. All this coming despite a ceasefire being brokered in recent talks. It's Sunday the 6th of March. You're watching 6 News also tonight. Shane Warne was one of the greatest cricketers of all time. And he was ours. 100% Australian. And we were so proud of him. Tributes continue to fly in from across Australia and around the world for cricketing legend Shane Warne, dead at the age of 52, as former teammates, rivals, politicians and the public remember the King of Spin. And later tonight, wet weather conditions ease in Queensland, where the state's southeast continues the clean up. But over in New South Wales, rain is expected in the next few days amid devastation in Lismore. Good evening. We will have special tributes for Shane Warne later in the bulletin. But first tonight, Vladimir Putin has warned that the worst is yet to come amid a noticeable escalation in the war over recent days. Tonight, there are fears that Russia's capture of the largest nuclear power plant in Europe could spell disaster. A column of military vehicles stationed just outside the capital, Kiev, also creating concern. All this despite a ceasefire being broken in recent talks. Both countries say they support the proposal, which would allow civilians to evacuate through humanitarian corridors. For the latest, let's go live to our chief reporter, Connor our 4K. Connor, after 10 days of war, how has the situation changed? The stakes are higher and the missile attacks indiscriminate now, Leo. Predictions that Kiev would fall last week missed the mark. But Vladimir Putin insists the invasion is going to plan. Comrades, the special military operation is taking place as planned. If that's the case, his plan must have included a partial ceasefire which came into effect yesterday evening our time. Russia declared a ceasefire in two southeastern cities. One is a strategic port city that has been pummeled by Russian forces for days. The purpose of the ceasefire, according to Russia, was to allow civilians to evacuate through humanitarian corridors. But the evacuation had to be put on hold, with one city saying Russian forces were breaking the ceasefire. Every two days, information comes out that I have fled somewhere. Fled from Ukraine, from Kiev, from my office. As you can see, I'm here in my place. Andrei Borsovich, your mock is here. Nobody has fled anywhere. Here, we are working. But the ceasefire by no means signals an end to the war. As you said off the top there, there are concerns we haven't seen the worst of it yet. At least, that's the impression Putin left French President Emmanuel Macron after a 90-minute call initiated by Russia. Could this be what he's referencing? There's mounting concern over a column of Russian military vehicles just outside the capital, with some speculating that troops, 15,000 of them it's estimated, are regrouping and restocking logistical supplies before a renewed assault on the capital. Or perhaps it's the capture of Europe's largest nuclear power plant in Ukraine. A fire broke out at the plant amid a military bombardment on Friday, igniting fears it would explode. That fire was extinguished, but the nuclear plant is now under Russian control. Not a single state apart from Russia has ever shelled nuclear reactors. It is for the first time in our history, in the history of humankind, that the terrorist state turned to nuclear terrorism. He said if there will be an explosion, it will be the end to all of us, the end of Europe. He implored Europe to stop Russian troops in order to prevent this continent's so-called death in an explosion he would, he said, would be, wor would be ten times worse than Chernobyl. That decommissioned site has also been captured. And now they have their eyes on another nuclear site. Russian forces are now 20 miles and closing from Ukraine's second largest nuclear facility. Meanwhile, Ukraine's president has rebuked NATO for refusing to impose a no-fly zone. Vladimir Zelensky said in a furious late-night speech, 
All the people who will die from this day forward will also die because of you, because of your weakness, because of your, because of your lack of unity. But NATO has stood firm, saying a no-fly zone would require NATO to shoot down Russian planes in Ukrainian airspace. We are not part of this conflict. And we have a responsibility to ensure it does not escalate and spread beyond Ukraine. Because that would be even more devastating and more dangerous. As for the wider international response, how's this for diplomacy? A US senator has called for someone within Vladimir Putin's inner circle to assassinate him. Leo. On our 4K live for us tonight. Thank you. Well, a number of news outlets have suspended their operations in Russia. They include the BBC, CNN and Bloomberg. It comes as RT America, part of the Kremlin-backed network Russia Today, shuts down and the outlet is geo-blocked for EU residents. Russian authorities then announcing that they will block Facebook and Twitter. Reporter Linda Holmes has everything you need to know. It's two o'clock here in Moscow and you're watching RT International live from our studio with me, Nadira Tudor. Russia Today is a state-controlled international network founded in 2005 which streams live 24-7 on its YouTube page but now they're facing what some say is censorship. And now a leading Australian pay TV company Foxtel will no longer distribute our channel RT, citing the crisis in Ukraine. Google announced that they would block RT and other state-owned outlets, but Nick on YouTube. Twitter also banned RT for countries within the European Union, and they have now claimed that Telegram has done similar. The state-owned Russia Today and Sputnik, as well as their subsidiaries, will no longer be able to spread their lies to justify Putin's war. One major RT service is RT America and part of the main network, which has now been shut down and laid off its staff. Businesses Insider reports that since 2017 it's received over $1 million in funding from the Russian government, over half of which came in 2020. Last week, The Guardian reported that Russian media have been told to use official government sources for their reports and not to use certain words to describe what's happening, including terms, attack, invasion and war. However, RT used at least one of those terms on air. Wherever you're catching the program from today across the globe, welcome to Moscow and to the news hour on RT. Western news outlets are now pulling out Russia. The BBC, CNN, ABC America, CBC and Bloomberg all suspended their on-the-ground operations. As reporters decide whether to leave Russia and Ukraine <laughs> or stay amid increasing violence. Lincoln Holmes, 6 News. Well, to the other breaking news story we're monitoring tonight and tributes are continuing to flow in from former teammates, rivals, politicians and the public across Australia and around the world to remember the King of Spin. Shane Warne dead at the age of just 52. Warne made his test debut in 1992, playing until 2007, then later going on to compete in the IPL and BBL as an inaugural player for the Melbourne Stars. In that test career, he took 708 wickets, his career best figures. 8 for 71 taken in 1994. He also took a record of 195 Ashes wickets. Political reporter Roman McKinnon takes a look back at his life and legacy. A nation in shock. Shane Warne has died aged 52. The King of Spin suffered a heart attack in a Thailand villa. This was his last tweet, paying tributes to Rod Marsh, who died hours before him. Australia woke up to the news on Saturday morning, losing one of the best Australian bowlers of all time. Breaking into programming this morning with the news, Shane Warne, one of Australia's greatest cricketers, has died. If you didn't watch cricket, you could say the name Warney, and everyone knew who you were talking about. Police revealed he was staying in a villa with mates watching the cricket. They tried to revive him before an ambulance arrived, taking him to hospital where he was pronounced dead. 
One of his friends said he came to call the victim to join the meal, but he could not wake the man up. The friend carried him downstairs and performed CPR. He took a spectacular 708 wickets from 145 tests in a 15-year career. In one series in 2005 against England, he took 40 wickets. In honour of the legend he was, the Great Southern Stand at the MCG will be renamed to the SK Warm Stand. Overseas, England captain Joe Root said he was an inspiration in his young cricketing career. Flowers, notes, beers and cricket balls have been left at the base of his statue in Melbourne, a memory of a man with talent. The England test team observed a one-minute silence for a man who changed the game. His sudden death, unpredictable as his leg spin and his flipper. Roman McKinnon, 6 News. And of course, as you can imagine, the news has made the front page of plenty of papers. Uh, I've got the Herald Sun with me now from yesterday. This was their front page, a special edition of the paper released late at night due to the time, of course, that the tragic news about Shane Warne came out. They simply state, Shane Warne dead. That is their front page, and they are going on to report that the Australian cricket legend was gone after suffering a heart attack in Thailand. They also go on to say, simply, this can't be true. So, of course, plenty of reaction continuing to come in from the newspapers, and we will, of course, keep monitoring that on our social media pages as well. But wet weather conditions, meanwhile, have eased in Queensland, where the cleanup continues in the state's southeast. But over in New South Wales, rain is expected in the next few days amid devastation in Lismore. Some residents who remain in hard to reach areas of the Northern Rivers region are reportedly still trapped and unable to call for help. And now some locals have even called for Lismore to be rebuilt elsewhere. Senior reporter Darby Travers has more. Well, tonight the cleanup is continuing in both of the states after those devastating floods amid the week of heavy rain. In southeast Queensland, a woman was found dead in waters on the Gold Coast yesterday morning. Over in New South Wales, Channel 9 reports that Premier Dominique Parate has urged people who remain under those evacuation orders in the flood-hit areas to follow the instructions of authorities. Now, Parate has declared that he is not going to spare a dollar in terms of flood recovery efforts promised to not just rebuild Lismore, instead they will quote, make it greater. However, some locals aren't happy, with some even telling the ABC that the town should be rebuilt somewhere else. As a town, we don't need to live on a knife's edge no. for six months a year yeah. in cyclone season. This town needs to be moved to Ganella Bar. I'm calling for state and federal investment now. Our council is broke after this. Our yeah. council has not enough money to even fix what damage is here. Yeah, not to mention, you know, the roads, the infrastructure. The town's, it's, it's, it's gone. It's gone. Um, we need help and we need it now. Yeah, now that heavy rain is expected to continue across New South Wales over the coming days. We will have your full weather forecast a little later tonight in the Bulletin. South Australia's police force will drop its COVID vaccine mandate for officers from tomorrow. The rule is set to end just a week before a Supreme Court challenge of the mandates will be heard. Unvaccinated officers will instead have to take a rapid antigen test at the start of every shift, along with wearing a mask. An abandoned rocket is believed to have hit the moon. The ABC reports that scientists expect the object to carve a hole 10 to 20 metres across. It was travelling at a speed of 9,300 kilometres per hour, but was too far away for telescopes to see. It's understood that it could potentially take months to see the full impact via satellite images. And now is Ivan Amelli with what's coming up later tonight on WAMN News. Thanks, Leo. Tonight on WAMN News, Mark McGowan gets a top grade from a top doctor over WA's COVID management as the border comes down and cases continue to spike. Welcome back. Travellers return to WA as the state drops its hard border. Calls for WA to commit to Ukrainian refugee intake numbers as the federal government begins to issue visas. Sculptures by the Sea has opened at Cottesloe Beach and is a feast for the eyes. Plus, Dr Andrew Miller's comment. Join us tonight on the WMN News Facebook page and YouTube channel. 
All right, thanks both Ivan and Melly there. Now tomorrow's weather forecast right across the country. Brisbane, partly cloudy, 31, 23 in thunderstorms in Sydney. Possible rain, 22 in the nation's capital, Canberra. 24, partly cloudy in Melbourne. 22 in Hobart, 25 in Adelaide. Sunny, 33 in Alice Springs. Also getting up to a top of 33 in Perth. And in Dale, a warm but wet top of 32. And just before we go tonight, just a bit of a important personal announcement. Of course, as you all know, uh, I am 14 years old in year nine, and as such, I do have school camps. Now, it just so happens that in the middle of a massive, massive news day and a massive couple of days of news, our camp is tomorrow, and it is Monday to Wednesday. So, of course, I won't really be able to B, I won't be reporting the news. Now, of course, we have a massive team here at Six News. Now, it might be small compared to the networks, but compared to where we came from, it is huge. And they, of course, will be monitoring developments continuously. So you can just follow us at Six News AU, any social media platform. Uh, if you remember, uh, last time I went on camp, the fifth lockdown in Victoria was announced. They covered that fantastically. I had no idea. So, of course, follow them. Uh, we do understand that we may, we may have access to mobile devices on camp. Uh, knowing regional internet, don't expect me to be posting updates, but of course, um, again, follow Six News AU. And if you've been monitoring the daily cat photos on my Twitter page, they will be continuing. Uh, you can, of course, see them in that thread, and there might be one that doesn't pop up on the thread, but the daily cat photos, they're not going anywhere. And that is Six News for this Sunday evening. Our coverage of the events in Ukraine continues on our website, sixnewsau.com, and on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Lit. Just search Six News AU to find us. We'll leave you now with pictures from throughout the life of Shane Warne, who's died at the age of 52. I'm Leonardo Puglisi. Thanks for your company. Good night.